Hello and welcome. Uh, in this video lecture, we will be discussing uh, different programming paradigms. Uh, now, before going into the programming paradigms, I just want to make it clear that why we are discussing programming paradigms now. We have already done a lot of things in, in one programming language that is C. Now, we are going to understand that which uh, idea or which paradigm that language was following and further what are the different uh, uh, paradigms which we can work on and slowly we will be moving okay so before going into that we need to understand the differentiation between the variety of paradigms and what type of programming comes under which category so uh, let us start with um, the programming paradigms now as you can see uh, it is visible in the diagram itself uh, that there are broadly two categories of programming paradigm number one is imperative and second is declarative right now imperative uh, programming paradigm is more focused towards uh, um, how to do something right it focus on how this is one one liner answer that if we talk about imperative paradigms the imperative paradigms follow one question that how do we solve something how do we do so now uh, whereas the declarative paradigms are more focused towards on what is the problem what we want to sort out okay this is the basic things now um, uh, inside this we have as you can see here forking we have three subcategories in ABC in case of imperative programming paradigm okay and as well we have three subcategories in case of declarative paradigm now let us see uh, the very basic definitions of imperative and declarative to understand it well okay we'll be starting by uh, the definition of imperative first uh, let me see if it is visible now it is perfect so imperative programming paradigm is the oldest programming paradigm as we can see now here I have certain things which I have marked for you that uh, uh, these these uh, paradigms they actually work with the relation of the machine architecture so I have uh, underlined or, or highlighted here this you must have studied at the time of introduction of uh, a computer or fundamentals of computer you must have studied about the von Neumann architecture von Neumann was a scientist who gave the uh, first architectural structure of computers that it contains so and so things like input output and there will be a processing unit a CPU and uh, some output device that type of structure the very basic block diagram you must have studied now the imperative programming works on that and uh, it performs step by step task I have highlighted here for you that the gist of the overall definition is that it based on the machine architecture step by step it, it takes the uh, uh, what are the uh, steps which are needed to be followed for changing from one state to another and uh, the main focus is on how to achieve the goal which we have decided or declared as a problem statement so in this paradigm it consists of several statements and after execution of all some result is stored or given as an output whereas if we want to uh, uh, study about the declarative paradigms so it is divided as uh, in the subcategory of three logic functional and database um, so declarative programming style is expressing something in terms of logic uh, uh, without talking about the control flow that what will be done afterward it's it's focused towards the logic that we need to uh, do these things we want this as an output 
it often considered as a program uh, uh, in some theoretical structure of logic and because of this uh, it was easy to write parallel programs because we are not looking about the control flow we are looking about the logic and computational part and those computational parts uh, can run parallelly as well so here the focus is on uh, what needs to be done rather than how it whereas in case of imperative it was focused on how to do so in the last i have um um uh, highlighted you one very important line which gives the overall gist of the definitions which we have discussed that how to do and what to do okay so uh, we have certain examples as well as uh, of languages like in in case of declarative programming uh, or parallel programs you can look for the scratch programming language devised by mit um and uh, in our uh, and like database programming i mean everyone have done sql as well uh, in case of uh, procedural programming we have already covered c programming which is the very basic procedural programming uh, object oriented uh, uh, the basic concepts was introduced in uh, c++ and then java is also somewhat object oriented not fully and then we have a parallel processing in picture now Uh, we have understood the gist of that there is, there are variety of paradigms um um and which can be taken into account or can be followed by any programming language okay now if we start with the procedural programming which we have already done so why do we move towards the object oriented programming that is a question so we are going to discuss about the limitations of procedural programming and then we'll switch into the object oriented programming paradigm and then we'll eventually learn how this object oriented code is written okay fine so the limitations of procedural programming um, is we can start with the one very basic that is Uh, uh because there is step by step things so we need to keep track of change in data being operated upon uh, by many functions simultaneously suppose we have a data which is uh, uh, being changed uh, by some function and it is also being used by some other functions so right uh, we can mark it as keep track of data now this data is nothing but a data which is shared among a uh, uh, different um, functions simultaneously data shared between different functions simultaneously okay slash many now the other uh, uh, limitation is uh, whenever there is a new data addition and because the data is used or operated across multiple or many functions then the need, the change or the new data addition should be modified accordingly to every place and uh, the third one is we do not have any kind of uh, uh, data access control so no data access control in case of procedural programming whatever we write we write step by step and something is in form of functions and the functions they share a common data one function can modify the day value of the data which other function is also utilizing if we have new data addition then it should be modified everywhere and these these are some of the challenges or limitations now we will be talking about the more about the object oriented programming as we are going to introduce 
some of the very basic concepts of OPS. In object-oriented programming, and we call it OOPS in short, all application components are objects. So, object is very important and the basic unit in case of object-oriented programming. Okay? And object has its own data and methods it has data and methods right it is a basic unit and it has now uh, uh, in order to use uh, uh, the objects uh, we ha we should have some blueprint that what will be the data or methods or what will be the attributes inside with the object so here is uh, one another term which is we i'm going to introduce which is called as class okay so class is nothing but a description of an object okay we can write in short a description of object that means the class is going to tell that what will be the attributes and behavior of the object. Okay. The class defines the data types for an object. Right. A class is a design time entity used to define the object. So we can, we will design a class once and we have multiple objects of same class. An object is a runtime entity created during the program execution. Okay. We will be dealing a lot more uh, uh, for that. So, what we can say that object has its own data and methods. And if we try to uh, uh, draw the example set for class, so we can uh, uh, define that a class have three components okay uh, the three components are like a class will have a name okay it's class will have a name and it will have some attributes attributes are nothing but properties and then we have some operations of that class. Now, if I want to uh, tell that in terms of a programming language, I can write uh, the example set of a class like suppose I have a class of uh, um, automobile or vehicles. So, class this is a keyword which is used class vehicle okay and then uh, we can have properties like model number and uh, we can have the color of the car and then we have some let's say registration number which can be the um, these are the this is I'm talking about here the name, these are the attributes and then we can have certain um, uh, um, operations like let's say the car can start, it can stop, it can move um, forward, right, it can move backward, forward. okay, so these are the operations which are in the now when we want to uh, uh, define that those things in terms of programming aspect the class name will be a uh, uh, same it will be a class name that, okay let me write over here so the class name will be uh, uh, like this is our class name 
and the attributes which which I uh, declared as uh, here the model number the color the registration number in terminology of programming we will be calling it as a data member I know uh, uh, just now I have written here attributes so the data members are the things which are going to define the attributes of the uh, class that means if I have one car let's say of Chevrolet then Chevrolet is a vehicle which is having certain model number uh, with a color some registration number it will uh, have certain operations as well and it belongs to a class which is called as vehicle right so every uh, object can have uh, these data members or attributes present with it and can utilize the member functions the operations are nothing but in programming terminologies these are called as member functions okay so uh, uh, the object will be going to utilize these member functions it has certain data members in terms of attributes and properties and it has a class name and whenever we want to utilize we will be uh, uh, utilizing these class details as a blueprint of the object thank you for watching in next video we will be doing certain programming aspects of classes and objects